An explosive report exposes how far UCLA's medical school will go to promote diversity over competence. People could die. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. A shocking report by the Washington Free Beacon shows that the UCLA's David Geffen School of Medicine, once ranked as one of the top medical schools, has become a failed medical school after implementing policies that encourage racial preferences. Con, this means that future doctors may be less qualified and get more people killed. But pro, that means future UCLA students will have way more cadavers to practice on. This report isn't coming from critics of DEI. This is from UCLA professors, whistleblowers, accusing UCLA's medical school of having double standards by virtually eliminating requirements for black and Latino applicants. Because nothing says we have full faith in certain racial groups like lowering the standards. The result is over half of UCLA medical students failed basic medical competency tests. Oh, you thought when I said UCLA was a failed medical school, I was being hyperbolic. Also, if you go to UCLA's medical school, hyperbolic means exaggerated. One professor said that a student in the operating room could not identify a major artery when asked, then berated the professor for putting her on the spot. That's horrible that the professor would try to oppress a BIPOC with his privileged white heterosisgender knowledge of how the human body works. Medical students should be able to listen to their heart, which is located somewhere, well, no one knows where it's located. Aren't a few deaths from medical malpractice worth it for the sake of diversity? Huh, no wonder they get mad at you when you say all lives matter. At the heart of UCLA's medical decline is the Dean of Admissions, Jennifer Lucero, who also happens to be Vice Chair for Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion of UCLA's Anesthesiology Department. And she does not like it when you question the qualifications of candidates with minority backgrounds. According to one whistleblower, when UCLA's Admissions Committee pointed out the below average grades and test scores of a black applicant in 2021, Lucero exploded. She reportedly said, did you not know that African-American women are dying at a higher rate than everybody else? I don't know how having unqualified doctors is going to help that. Lucero said the applicant scores shouldn't matter because we need people like this in the medical school. We need people who can't pass basic medical competency tests as doctors. That same year, the admissions committee rejected a Native American applicant, and boy, Lucero was not happy. Lucero chewed out the committee and made members sit through a two-hour lecture on Native history delivered by her own sister. Not a very productive way to get anything done, unless you belong to Lucero's family. In fact, the committee didn't review any applicants that day because of it. it seems as though qualification is the last thing in Lucero's mind, because according to whistleblowers, Lucero had even advocated moving candidates up or down the residency rank list based on race, giving people preferential treatment based solely on the color of their skin. You know, I think there's a word for that. For some reason, I just can't think of it. As an example of this race-based ranking system, in a February 2022 meeting, Lucero demanded that a poor performing Hispanic woman be bumped up in ranking and a highly qualified white man be knocked down. The reason? We have too many of his kind. Huh. We have too many of his kind. That sounds, well, quite frankly, it's downright... <coughs> Still can't think of the word for it. UCLA, of course, denies the whistleblower allegations and claims that students are admitted based on merit. However, since Lucero took her position, the failure rate at certain medical tests has increased by as much as 10 times. But you know what UCLA's medical school does have? Mandatory health equity classes that medical experts themselves describe as pedagogical malpractice and nonsensical which would really upset these UCLA medical students if they knew what pedagogical malpractice means. Unfortunately, it's not just UCLA we have to worry about. It's the entire medical school industry. Even with the Supreme Court ruling against affirmative action, many are determined to skirt around the rules to promote racially conscious policies at medical schools. In order to get around not publicly hyper-focusing on race, 
Medical schools instead promote a holistic review for applicants, balancing academic metrics with experience and attributes. Yes, the experience of being black or Hispanic is more important than knowing where a major artery is. They're essentially playing a poor game of guess who to get students who are bad at playing operation. And many argue this is just a way to get around the Supreme Court's affirmative action ruling, since UCLA also uses a holistic review process for medical school applicants. But in practice, according to an admissions officer, all the normal criteria for getting into medical school only apply to people of certain races. For other people, those criteria are completely disregarded. Because the first thing I look for in a new primary care physician isn't how knowledgeable they are, it's how hard it is for them to get a sunburn. This is part of a growing backlash to DEI, critical race theory, and woke ideology in general. And let me define that term for you. I like how James Lindsay describes it. The founding premise of woke ideology is that there is no shared reality we inhabit because perception determines reality, and perception is shaped by social position with respect to power. You know, there's another word for when you don't have a shared reality. Mental illness. In this case, one that can be taught and spread. But when woke ideology comes for children, when it comes for doctors whom we literally put the lives of ourselves and our families in their hands, people will push back because they're white supremacists and need to be stopped. Do you like diversity, equity, and inclusion? Then include yourself by diversifying your YouTube profile by subscribing so I can have a more equitable share of YouTube. And America Uncovered wouldn't exist without support from fans like you on the crowdfunding website Patreon. All it takes is a dollar an episode on patreon.com slash America Uncovered. I usually make about 12 episodes a month, but if that's too much for you, you can always set a monthly limit. You can help me continue to uncover America for just a dollar a month. Hit that orange button to support the show on Patreon. And if you want to know more about what critical race theory really teaches, check out this episode. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.